so I was pretty much well balanced and playing Minecraft it's 4.28 a.m. you know April 7th and uh yeah, if you heard that in the opening, that was my daughter playing Roblox. And uh, we're just chilling. And I, I came across this video, and I am honestly tired of people being stupid. I have nothing left. I, sometimes, you know, before I do a video, I go, I run the gamut of the benefit of the doubt. Um, I think about, you know, what if because of this because of that and but what you know what they see just compels uh, you know I argue with myself you know just trying to like there's got to be a reason you know sometimes there isn't one they just do what they do and they don't have any thought about it preconceived notion uh combined with distrust combined with i'm just sick and tired of where I am or what I'm doing. It's it's akin to being stuck at a quote unquote dead end job. Name name a job where you can rise to the top and own that company. It's, they're all dead end jobs. There's a place where you stop. I mean, just, come on, that's just rational. You know, big business don't become big business by giving the business away. You know, you sell it out and whatnot. So, I was watching the Masters Report hosted by Chris Masters. I'm I'm just going to throw it out there. He's a libertarian. So, he's a Republican with some goofy ass ideas. And usually he does police videos and they're always solid. It makes sense, but then when it comes to stuff like this, this is where he fails. So, he's promoting this hashtag film your hospitals. He posts this stuff and it's like I want you to think about it. I really want you to think about it. He, he, he has no idea what he's promoting. It's, you know, like DMX said, you don't know what you're asking for, but you ask for more. That's what he and others are doing. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. It's him and he's hosting this other dude's crap. And I'm probably, I'm just going to break it down little by little. Hopefully it's not going to be too long. I don't want the question to 15 or 20 minutes. So we're going to get started. Go ahead and load that. Okay, the last one of the day Let's in from that. Aaron Rupert on Film Your That's Hospitals. Out. You guys tell me what you think. And I do have the link to his video in description. Okay, it is April 5th, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We'll pause it while I need to. University of Dayton Arena. This is this is your outbreak. This is this is the outbreak. Tire college basketball arena. There's not a car in this parking lot. All right. So, question. What what do you think an outbreak is? You know, what, anyone watching this, whether you think it's a hoax or not, what did you think an outbreak would look like? You know, what did you think an outbreak would look like? I already know what you thought. I had my thoughts about it too until it started. I had better thoughts than this back in early January. So yeah, low, low brow. Or in the voice that I use when I'm talking to everyone here, just joking. I'm like, low brow, I tell you. So, all right, keep it rolling. Where's the outbreak? They said we were all gonna die. Nothing. There's a tent. There's not a single person here. There's the other tent. Now. So, for all you people that think that COVID's a real serious problem, where's, where's the victims? They said millions. We're gonna die millions. There's nobody even here. Now, I'm gonna drive down to the biggest hospital in Dayton, and uh, we're gonna take a look at that. I'll uh, resume the video here in a few minutes when I get there. Um, all right. 
Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to end it there because he said enough stupid shit. He has. All right. Let me explain something. Your arrogance doesn't make it true. If a tree falls and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Yes, you just won't there to hear it. And see, something just don't make, it, it won't make a sound because no one's around. It's not like, oh, I fall with the sound of a feather because no one's around to hear me. I'm just not going to say anything. That's not how impact and reverberation work. It's not how, it's not how sound waves work. It emits a sound. You just won't there. Right now, there are whales that are, you know, they're, they're clicking and they're making sounds. They're, they're doing their linguistics for themselves. Sharks do the same thing. Other fish. Yes, there's lightning happening right now in multiple areas around the world. I can't hear it, so I'm to assume it's not making a sound. Lightning, there's no, there's no shock wave. There's no thunder afterwards. No, it's just because I'm not there. It doesn't make a sound. Yeah, human arrogance always 100% leads to human stupidity. There's nobody there because when it's time to go to the hospital, they pick them up and they take them, they take them in. That's why they some places waive ambulance fees and some are just storing them up. Like, you don't have to pay it now, but when this is over, it's your ass. So, ambulance, pick them up, take them in. You're not going to see cars. And people are urged to stay away from hospitals for a reason. Because when they get into the hospital, the person is coughing, sweating probably, sneezing. Though the COVID-19 virus is in every cough, do you know how much water you expel when you just exhale alone? I mean... Water is going to escape the body through your pores on your skin, urination, or, uh, you know, you know, rectal, spitting, coughing, exhaling. You know, it's what happens, tears. It's, it's liquid's going to get out of you. That's why you need to hydrate often. It's going to find a way out and you got to replenish it. So their air in those hospitals inside, not the... Not the no, not necessarily the waiting room, but you know what? When they wheel somebody in there, and they cough, that's in the air, and it goes everywhere. And they don't want to spread it, so you stay away. It's logic, it's rational. Don't come in here before this outbreak. People was going in for any sniffle. They was going in for my knee hurt today. It's like maybe you got gas. Or maybe it hurts because you, you know, got out of bed and twisted it wrong. Or when you bumped your knee into that wall. Or when you got into a fight and somebody hit it and you don't want to take responsibility that, you know, you shouldn't have gotten in that fight. Maybe running away would have been the best thing. So you go in, you got to see everything. Every doctor, everything. You got to waste emergency, medical room time, and everything. Waiting rooms, they fill up because everybody is there for something. They get the sniffle, they want antibiotics. Antibiotics is bacterial. This is viral take antibiotics for a virus you make things that are well that needs to be killed by antibiotics antibiotic resistant and you and, and here's the thing you, you you watch too many movies you've grown up and I get it I get it you watch the movies you hear about the tales of the, the plague you know multiple plagues you know from from uh, the UK Africa you know, the malaria outbreak and stuff, all this, all this stuff. You get, I get it. I get it. And they group it all because they can't talk about the multitudes of days. You know, no, they just show you the piles of bodies. Because back then they didn't have better ways of disposal. They didn't have better ways to hide it. So sometimes you pile them up outside of homes in a town square and then you burn them. Back then, that's what they did. At some point, they just bury every single one of them. 
And so you see mounds all over the place on the outskirts of town or the city. Now they're putting them in, you know, first it was the morgues. Now they're putting them in refrigerated trucks. So you're not seeing the bodies because this is a real life thing. This is real. It's in the movies. See, in the movies, you think about something like zombie apocalypse or something like 28 Days Later. They're not zombies. They're just, it's just enraged. And you just see people all in the street running around angry or zombies walking around or people who are sick trying to get away, trying to do anything to save themselves. You know, that's what you're used to. Used to seeing that. So you walk around or you drive around and you're like, where's the pandemic? It's there. And the best thing for you is the fact that you're not seeing it. Because if you get sick and you got to make that call, you're going to find out. And you're not going to be happy. And then you're going to think, crap, I need to report this. But how? You're trapped. They're not letting you out. Let me tell you where you go the most wrong with this film your hospitals crap. You're spitting in the face of everyone who's lost family members. You're, you're, you're spitting in the face of them. Slapping them across the jaw. You don't care. Yeah, I know you don't want to be where you are. You don't want to be stuck. You don't want to be isolated. You don't want to be quarantined. You feel control. You want to just go out and do what you want to do because you have this, this thing of, you know, we have freedom. We can do whatever we want. And you know what? You can. You can go on out there, do what you want, and look as dumb as you actually are. Or worse, get proven wrong and you find out where they are. I'm not happy with this pandemic. Me, I'm inside. I'm in my wheelhouse. I'm good. My illness keeps me inside, so I've been prepared for years in terms of staying inside. But you've got people that's going out there spreading it. Just like I said would happen. Just like when it came to HIV and AIDS, when someone says, well, if I get it, I'm going to spread it to as many people as I can. That's what they did. And now you got people out there licking deodorant bottles, opening unsecured bottles anyway, drinking it, putting the lid back. You know, you got people out there coughing all over food. You got people just being as dumb as they can. You got the white supremacists out there trying to give it to minorities. If you find a way to give it to them, give it to them. That's the world we live in. That's the United States of America. Now, when all of this, okay, I'm 13 minutes. When all of this started in China, I said then, in those that first video, we don't know where it came from. We just know where they're reporting it from. It could have it could have come from anywhere. A melted ice glacier, it could have came from uh, some kind of animal. It could have been mutated from other diseases. We don't know. We know it's here. We need to take care of it. But see, while it was in China and being reported on from China and Italy, no one here gave a shit. No one cared because it's the other, because they're not white and wealthy and rich or Christian. No one believed it because they're not the right shade of black or they're just too popular as a black person. Everyone across the damn board was dumb as shit and no one's going to own up to it. You got to own up to it. When I saw this was in China and thousands had got infected and it was isolated but not reported on where else it might have spread, I knew it was a matter of time. And I hoped against it. I hoped that things would have been smarter here. Smarter. Just like a stupid child. You want your way of life. You don't want nothing to change, but you didn't do anything to make sure that it didn't change. You had the, Trump and his administration, Pelosi and her quote-unquote administration, since she's mama bear, according to AOC. They could have said something. These Republicans, the Democrats... They could have said something, but they said nothing. 
They sold off shares. They knew it was real. They knew what was coming. See, Mount Olympus, they cut the bottom part off and they stay at the top. Sell off your shares. Make sure that the upper crust keeps theirs. Don't worry about everyone at the bottom. Because after everyone at the bottom is going to listen to you. Ain't that right? Everyone at the bottom is going to listen. And they're going to believe. So when you call it a hoax, when you say it's not real, but yet you want to protect yourself from the unwashed masses, see, that's a giveaway. But nobody wanted to think about that. As soon as this stuff started, Trump stopped touring. Oh, always doing a rally. Trump is the king of rallies, but he stopped. He stopped those rallies. Didn't go anywhere. No one thought about that. No one's even reported that. I'm a first. These, these, these people that go around filming, what they're doing is saying that everyone has lost a loved one is a lie. Like getting mowed down at your school and then someone saying, you were an actor, you never got killed. Family grieving, crying. That void will never be filled. And yet, you're going to say it's a lie. See, if somebody that lost a loved one got a hold of you, everyone should just stand back and let what happened happen. These, it's time to stay safe, stay inside. You want to call it a hoax. You won't call it a hoax when the other had it. Now that it's here, now it's a hoax. Oh, it was real. It was so real in China, so real in Italy, so real in the UK. But here is faith. National exceptionalism is a foolhardy idea. And it takes a fool to even be that way. So, going out there and filming your hospitals being buildings. Film them. Film them. And if they let you in, they might not let you out because it's everywhere. In those buildings, it's on the walls, the floors, the elevators, the door handles, the air. It's everywhere. And if you get closer to where they're keeping everyone that's actually sick, and I'm talking about not just I know I got it, but I'm not that bad off. I'm talking about those that are dying. Those that may not be dying, but wish they were dead or think they're dying. You're going to find out where they are and how bad it is. And it's about everybody's going to, everybody's going to die. Everybody's supposed to die. Millions are supposed to die. You're supposed to see them in the street or something? Millions in your area? Millions where you live? That's what you think. That's your problem. It ain't about you. It's about us. It's about everybody. Millions around this nation. It might be. But with social distancing, and I mean not six feet, not ten feet, I mean keep your ass inside. Go out only if you absolutely have to. And when you do, wear some kind of mask, wear a scarf around that mask if you're embarrassed, embarrassed about it. Bo the fifth column went over that. You know, put on some gloves, disinfect the gloves on the outside. You spray it, wash the gloves like, like you're washing your hands. Get it good. Handle, handle packages. You get a package, leave it outside. Just leave it out there for a day and a half. Bring it in. Spray it down. Spray down the floor. You know, spray it. Disinfect it. And then when you open it up, make sure you're wearing gloves. Practice safety. It sucks. It takes you out your norm. You ain't used to it, but that mean that doesn't mean you, you could just be as stupid as you want to be. Use that thing behind your eyes. You got it for a reason. Use it. Because sadly, just like a drunk driver, see, the drunk one usually survives. You know why? Because they go limp. Usually they go limp. They don't have that much muscle control anyway. They go limp. They might suffer some damage, some severe damage. But it's the one that's not drunk. Everything tightens up. And in their panic, they have 
no control while trying to maintain some and they get hurt right now this film your hospitals they're a mixture of both because they want to think they're in control but they're drunk on stupid and truthfully not only will they get hurt they're going to hurt everybody else and that's the problem with them you need to keep your ass inside keep it inside breathe that air don't let it out to others you stay away from others so they can't get sick and so they can't get you sick that's why it's distancing and I mean grand distancing you know my best suggestion is don't film the hospitals don't because you don't know what nurse or doctor you're going to roll up on and when they're talking and that little bit of spittle that comes out that you can't see lands on your face or the back of your hand or the palm of your hand or maybe in your eye you can't see it sometimes you can't feel it but then now you got it because they might they might be asymptomatic or they might have contracted it and don't have any symptoms yet or when could come up and blow it off of them somehow this virus ain't thinking it just is kind of like you all you're not thinking you just are being what you are so my best advice is to use that thing on top of your neck under your cranium and above your jaw behind your eyes and slightly above your ears my fat open those too because the shit you're doing now it ain't helping it's not it's only hurting it's making everyone have to stay inside longer everyone get your shit together so we can actually beat this this is Cedric Kennedy for comparative reasoning thank you for listening